Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our special second episode of Inside the Brewery here with the Laurel Highlands Visitors Bureau and along the Laurel Highlands Poor Tour. I'm Jared Bundy, your host for this second special edition. Uh, if you're watching live on the video here, you can already see where we are. Uh, but today we are in Illusion Brewing Company. Uh, we are located in Vandergriff, Pennsylvania. This is one of the newest stops on the Poor Tour. We're super excited to be here to tell you everything that Illusion has going on uh, and to talk to one of the owners today who's joining us. And today we're joined by Robert Buchanan. Thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming out. Of course. So uh, yeah, we're sitting here in your awesome brewery right now. There's uh, lots of good stuff uh, happening behind us, but let's start at the beginning. Uh, you know, what, what's going on with Illusion Brewing Company? Where did, where did this come from? Uh, Illusion Brewing Company came from myself and John Bernowski, who is a uh, Kiski area alum. We were home brewers together uh, going on eight years ago and just found that he, we became friends over 10 years ago and found that he had uh, his goal, like his aspiration is he one day wanted to own his own brewery. And back then we were, we worked together down in the strip district in Pittsburgh. And in our lunch conversations, a, we just brainstormed and we just, uh, you know, kind of daydreamed together about what it would be like to have a brewery and what would, you know, what would we call it? What would we do? And at one point I asked John, I was like, wait a minute, if we ever want to do this, why aren't we at least brewing beer? <laughs> and, and so, uh, you yeah, he really didn't have a good answer that for, for that. So we went, I went out, I got a beer kit and I said, John, we are brewing this weekend at my apartment at the time. I said, I'm going to brew some beer. You're welcome to join me. And of course he came over and he joined me. Uh, <laughs> So we brewed, uh, we brewed our first beer, one gallon, in uh, just my little apartment at the time. And uh, that, I think, just opened up the floodgates for, for John and his, you know, his passion for this craft. Because the next week at work, he told me, he was like, yeah, I ordered this, and I ordered this, and I ordered this. And he had already ordered a, just a higher end system. <laughs> We in one week we went from one gallon to five gallons. We started brewing, and then he's like every day at lunch we're talking, and he's he wants he's thinking about this. He's thinking about this, and every time we brewed, he had a new piece of equipment. He was upgrading this. He was upgrading that. He was. We got to the point where after a couple of years we were brewing a half barrel at a time, and then all of a sudden he tells me he's got a conical fermenter, a stainless <laughs> steel conical fermenter, and it, it's it's just snowballed from there. And about 2016, the quality of the beer that he was creating, I felt was good enough that we were at a point where we could start talking about taking the next step mm -hmm. and creating a brewery, working towards finding a location, finding somewhere and, and going through the steps, getting the funding to create our own business. And we both absolutely agreed that we did not want to be uh, in the greater Pittsburgh area around the city. Uh, you know, even it's a higher population, potentially higher clientele. We both wanted to find a smaller Western Pennsylvania town that would not only support us as a small brewery, but something that we could hopefully help the town and bring business into the town, move, you know, move the focus away from big city living and go back to the smaller communities where we both grew up. We both grew up in small Western Pennsylvania towns and that's what we wanted to do. And, you know, I think uh, we're there. Amazing. Man, what a story. So, hey, home brewers out there, if you're listening, like here's your here's your tale of uh, success of starting with one gallon. And I know like I'm about there. I'm at the one gallon uh, <laughs> version of being a home brewer right now. But, you know, how quickly this can blossom, this can become something that, that I mean, you see, like, look at all the equipment and the, this this location is beautiful. you got to come check it out. But how quickly this can become something that is your passion project and become something you're, the, you know, now you're celebrating your grand opening. Oh, yes. Oh yes, and and through the grand opening, we've only been I believe this is day twelve. We uh, we've we just had our grand opening on the tenth of October, and I can tell you already, we've had dozens and dozens of people that come in, and I homebrew, I homebrew. Home can you know, can we see your system? John gives them a tour. They're on cloud nine, but they give us their stories too. They're like we homebrew and we do this, and this is what we're you know this is what we're using, and they're asking advice, and mm -hmm. every single one of them, I'm, I'm, I see. 
that the potential is there to go down that same path because it's it's just fun. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful, and if you're creating good beer, it's, it's what people are looking for. Amazing, and I, I love what you talked about with, with the small towns, and I think that's very important to us at the Laurel Highlands. It was part of the reason we put together the Poor Tour is because we saw all of these great breweries that are in every town. You know, you go to West Newton, there's breweries, distilleries tucked in there. You drive through Somerset, you're in Berlin. You know, you go down a road and like, boom, there's Whitehorse. So you're going to all these small towns and all of a sudden, like all of these great breweries are popping up. Uh, so, you know, th that was part of the founding vision of this is to get people to towns maybe they wouldn't normally travel to or to take a different scenic drive. You know, we're in fall right now. It was a mm -hmm. great drive to Vandergrift today. Like the leaves were beautiful. Oh, like it was, gorgeous. It, it was a gorgeous day out. So, you know, maybe talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, why Vandergrift? Why did you pick this town in particular? Well, we got um, John's cousin actually owns Wooden Door Winery, mm. which he was opening his second location in Vandergrift. He converted the old church around the corner to his second location for his winery. He knew that John and I were looking for uh, this type of location for our brewery. Mm. And he actually suggested that we come and meet with uh, meet with the town council, meet with the Vandergrift Improvement Program. And he was actually suggesting a couple buildings that we come check out. We came into Vandergrift and we did just that. We met with the, the nonprofit improvement program. We met with the town council. We went around and talked to some of the business owners around town. We told them that we were considering bringing a brewery into Vandergrift. The overwhelming support and enthusiasm. I mean, this is people were sitting down, we're talking to them. This caused them to stand up excited. <laughs> and yes, please, please bring a brewery to Vandergrift. It was it was overwhelming support. And it still is. Mm -hmm. Even after we've opened, it's it's just still everybody coming in saying, Thank you so much for opening a Vandergrift. This is awesome. This is great for Vandergrift. And and we we hope that we continue to elicit that response and, and give back to the community. Amazing. I mean, yeah, when you go about it all the right ways like that, and you meet with the community, you make sure it's something that they're open to, and now you see the response. I mean, I just delivered a giant box of uh, Portor passports <laughs> as I came in today because they're going through them so fast. So uh, make sure you have your passport before you show up and you'll be able to check in and get your sticker when, when you come here, one of the newest stops. But uh, that's great. You know, you had the town so involved from the beginning, and mm -hmm. now you're seeing the fruits of that. Yes, absolutely. And one other thing that, that we did when we were deciding whether Vandergriff was indeed our town where we wanted this brewery to be. Um, crazy to think we have also had people coming in and they're like, I was at your tasting years ago. What year was that? I was at the tasting mm -hmm. you did. We had a tasting in 2017 in February. It seems so long ago in February of 2017, we brewed five different beers and the fire hall at the top of the hill, let us use their banquet room to do our tasting and what we, we were doing it. And we had kind of two reasons that we were doing it. The first reason was all these people in Vandergrift are giving us their unconditional support. Like they're just, it, it's flattering how much support we're getting from this town. And I went to our, you know, the other owners and I said, we need to show them that they're supporting a quality product. Like they're supporting good beer. And so we brewed five different beers and gave five tickets to everybody that came to the tasting. The intention was that everybody could try all five beers. Mm -hmm. And we had several people that were, can I use all five of my tickets for this beer? This is amazing. It's so good. Again, the, this response back then. So we wanted to show everybody they're supporting a good product, mm -hmm. but we also needed to make sure that this wasn't a town where everybody drinks key ice or, right. or natty light. You know that there were craft enough craft beer fans here that it would support us. Mm -hmm. So we brought five sixtals of pale ale, just regular pale ale. Mm -hmm. um, we brought an IPA, an oatmeal coffee stout, a chocolate stout, and Baker Street Brown, which is one of our main staples. We brought one or two sixtals of those, and five of the pale because I was like, well, you know, if everybody isn't that into craft beer, maybe they'll like the pale. The other four beers, gone. Within two hours, gone. We went home with pale ale. <laughs> we went, everybody was loving the IPA and the chocolate stout mm -hmm. and the, the oatmeal stout and the, the Baker Street Brown mm -hmm. so much. I don't want that pale ale. I want the good stuff. We closed down that tasting. I looked at John and my other owners and I said, this is our town. 
Amazing. This is our town. That's such a thing. Emma, that's so cool that you had that moment. Like yeah. that had to be so inspiring. It was. It was. It's it's you know, it's just goosebumps. It was it was wonderful. It was a great event. People yeah. still and they still talk about it. They still come they come in after we've opened, mm -hmm. sit down and have their beer, and we go around and we try to talk to almost everybody. And they're I was at your tasting. <laughs> I was at your tasting. Are you gonna make this? Are you gonna they remember the beers wow. from 2017? I had a gentleman just yes, yesterday. He was like, Are you gonna have that IPA? That you uh, made in 2000. I said, actually, we're brewing that very soon. That's un unreal. I, I can't believe, like, for one tasting. I mean, it, I mean, if you're a craft beer fan, though, I feel like I get you because when you taste beer that's that good, you yep. do remember where you were. Like, I remember like what turned me on to craft beer and like my experience. That like you open the floodgates for it. So yeah. I get that. So look how many people I think you were that moment. Right. I mean, we had hundreds of people show up for that tasting, and it, it's great. It's you know they. They, they go back, they've come in, other people have looked and see, they're looking back at our history on Untapped mm -hmm. because we've had people rating our beers on Untapped back to 2014. <laughs> and they're going on Untapped and they're like, um, I don't see this on your draft list. I don't wow. see, are you brewing this? Are you gonna brew this? Are you gonna brew this? It's it's amazing. It's it's flattering is what it is. It's, yes. it's, it's flattering, it's wonderful. Um, I, I don't want it to stop. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's going to anytime I soon. It, I hope it does not. Man. Well, yeah. Well, let's get more into the, the brewery itself now. You sure. know, we kind of talked about the, your origins and, mm -hmm. and how we got here. So, uh, you know, excuse my Pittsburghese, but I'm saying a, a, Illusion with an A, Illusion Brewing. So how did you come up with, with that name? You know, what, what's the significance behind that? We, when we were talking about, well, we actually came up with beer names first. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So we started home brewing and... Every time we brewed a beer, we would, you know, naming beers is just fun. Right. It's fun to do. So, you know, I would name some beers that I was coming up with recipes for. John would name some beers. And we quick, quickly found that every time we named a beer, mm -hmm. we were making some kind of a reference. John and I are both uh, very much into history, classical literature, um, you know, movie reference, you know, movie references, that kind of thing. Well, we found that every time we were naming a beer, we were making a reference mm -hmm. to, to something in, in history, cla classical literature, um, like our pumpkin out gently wrapping is from Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Um, we have a couple beers that uh, we haven't made yet. There were also like uh, one of the, an imperial stout that we have that we haven't brewed on this system yet. Uh, Endless Dark is mm. a reference, it's a re reference to Ernest Hemingway. Oh, okay. He was obsessed with death and his, his, what he called death was endless dark. So Imperial Stout for as dark as ever. So we found that we're, we're, and I looked at John one day and I'm like, you realize that we're making an illusion every time that we make a beer. And he's, yeah. And I said, you understand that illusions bring different genres together. Mm -hmm. You know, mythology, biblical, historical, Western, whatever the case may be, you can make an illusion and you can bring two genres together that otherwise would never connect. Mm -hmm. And I said, John, craft beer brings people together too. It's like our brewery has to be illusion brewing. And that day that we came up with that, all of our craft beer friends that we were co the co-workers with us, mm -hmm. it was you could just hear it through the work. They, they loved it. They loved that they, that's your brewery. That's it. That's that's your name. That has to be your name. I said. Works for me. And that was done. It was, it was done. We stuck from there. <laughs> it was done. That's great. I, was, I think it's really unique. It super stands out. Like, like I don't know. Yeah, I just like see it. Like it always like sticks out to me. Yeah, when, when I see Illusion Brewing, I want to know more. I especially want to go to the tap list because I want to see if like how many are the references I can get. Yeah. Oh, that, that's fun. People are doing that. Nice. <laughs> and that's fun. They're sitting there. They're looking at the tap list, and I get that one. I get that one. I get that one. And they'll call me out. Like I don't get this one. What's this one from? And it's uh, there's a couple of them that are you know older uh, like one anymore. Mm -hmm. One anymore is something a lot of the the younger uh, you know twenties thirties because that's from a very old American poem. Might, Mighty Casey at the back. Oh right. So you know the old baseball player that waves off the pitches and then the ends with Mighty Casey has struck out. Well, there's a point in there where the crowd was begging him for one inning more, and. This was a beer that we made in a summer, and we just thought it would be a perfect drinking beer while you're watching baseball. Mm -hmm. So we made an illusion that referenced baseball. It just we try to make the illusions also match the beer style. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just fun. Yeah, so that, 
it's a lot of fun. You could just spend all day coming up with like fun ways to tie, yeah, a, a style to a, a literary reference to what goes in, you know, what you're brewing with. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a ton of fun to do. Oh, we have uh, we have sessions with the owners. Like when we have board meetings, we'll sit down, we'll have a beer, and we'll have ten different names. <laughs> and it, it we're it's back and forth. It's back and forth. We had for three hour tour our IPA with papaya, mm -hmm. and papaya originated in Central America. We had all kind of references for the Mayan culture. Mm -hmm. Um, we, you know, and, and they were very obscure and we were afraid that nobody would really get it or they wouldn't be able to pronounce this or that. Right. <laughs> and if you can't pronounce, like my sister came, she's like, if I can't pronounce the beer name. I'm not ordering it. <laughs> okay. This is good feedback to have. So, uh, you know, well, what about like Gilligan's Island, something mm -hmm. with that? And I was like, okay, what if, why don't we call it fateful trip? I thought that was a good one. Yeah. And they were like. Maybe it's a little obscure. What if we call it three hour tour? Everybody's going to get it. I was like, everybody will get it. Okay, let's do it. So it is, it's just fun. Amazing. And I did, I did. I got that one right away. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you also have, you have all the literary references, but you've also built that into the tap room itself. So you oh, want yes. to talk about more about like, like the space that we're in. So we see the tap room behind, you know, or we see the equipment behind us, but out in the tap room, what should people expect when they visit? When you come to Illusion, you're going to see with the decor we went for. The building in this town is was built in the late 1800s. And a lot of these buildings were then decorated, built, updated in the 1920s, mm -hmm. which was very much prohibition time. Um, the style of the period was uh, Art Deco. And if you look at the exterior of our building, it, it very much is right. very Art Deco building. So our entire remodeling and, and design scheme is built around Art Deco and 1920s Prohibition Speakeasy. So we did everything there, but we, you know, we do tie in factors with the illusion and the literary. Uh, when you see our tap handles, our tap handles are actually a, uh, a little bookshelf or a um, little uh, side table book stand with a stack of books on it. So if you're sitting down and you're reading a good book and you've got a beer and your little book stands next to you, that's our tap handles. Amazing. So try to tie. Uh, we have a. We're going to have a bookcase once COVID's. You know the restrictions are lifted. We'll have a bookcase in our hallway where people can take a book, leave a book. We've had people show up with their mug club and sit there and read a book for two hours. It's wonderful. Amazing. It's Amazing. Wonderful. I don't, I don't know. And it, it just seems like peaceful. Like, I love that there's different rooms. Like, there's the main tap room area, but then you have, like, a nice back room here with tables set up and everything. Like, I mean, I could just spend an afternoon here with a, with a good book, especially in the winter curled up. I think you're going to have a great spot here. I hope people do that. I, that would, nothing would please me more. If you don't want to sit and talk about craft beer, which a lot of people do, and that's great, you want to come in and just sit and have a couple beers and read a book, it's perfect. I mean, Both fit what we wanted. Perfect. Yeah, yeah so it caters to a little bit of everything. Uh, so, you know, I guess... We, you know, you're open now. This is our 12th day, so uh, you know we're, you're still uh, getting everything. Uh, you know, all the little bugs worked out. I'm sure as, as you go along. But let's talk about like events and, and what's upcoming. So, what's going to be next for Illusion itself? Uh, Illusion next, we have well, the nearest thing I think we have. We have a couple holiday celebrations coming to Vandergrift. Mm -hmm. uh, one is right after Thanksgiving, the holiday parade, and the town has already approached us. <clears throat> Excuse me. The the town has already approached us, and they want us. They close off the streets mm -hmm. for this parade, and they've approached. They actually approached us last year for mm -hmm. last year's parade. They want us to rope off into the street and create an illusion brewing beer garden for this event. Uh, the gentleman on the town council that handles uh, entertainment has already talked about wanting to come up with an event where he closes down the whole street. And everybody, in not just a little beer garden outside of Illusion, but the entire street would be a festival for the, the uh, wood fire pizza shop and Illusion Brewing. So the whole street would be filled potentially with people with, with cups with our beer and, and the stone fire, Ioni's Pizza. Mm -hmm. um, right the weekend after the holiday parade is a massive holiday extravaganza. And they've thought that through. They're expect it's a three day event. Mm -hmm. They're expecting upwards of ten thousand people to this this festival. And you're like, wait a minute, that could be red flag. What's going on here? Um, you know, that many people clustered mm -hmm. could be a problem. So they have it. It's actually going to be events scattered all over the town. So there's going to be a lot of people, but they're going to be spread out. 
Right. So there's going to be an event at this church, event at this church. Well, again, they've asked us again to have the beer garden out front. Um, you know, this restaurant or this business will have this. There'll be um, scavenger hunts, that kind of thing. Stuff to keep people spread out. But they still want to celebrate the holidays. With the year that we've had, mm -hmm. they still want to do something to celebrate the holidays. So we have that. We're being approached by uh, several different groups to potentially do more events in the future. And we're up for as many as we possibly can do because that's what we want to do. We want to be part of the community. Amazing. So we are just scratching the surface here. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we are like many, many more things to come. Great events, both at Illusion, in the community itself. You can see you can stop out here and really make a day of it. Do some holiday events, mm -hmm. you know, stop by the beer garden, you know, sneak away from the family for a second, go have a beer, <laughs> come back, you know, come back with your with your poor tour sticker and, uh, and, you know, keep enjoying all the events that are going on. Yeah, no, it's great. We have people that there's a, there's a karate school in, in town. There's a dance school in town mm -hmm. and we have had parents there. They can't go in for COVID restrictions. They cannot go in with their child. Mm -hmm. So they, it's just right across the street and one block down. So they have put their child into the karate class or the dance class. They come up, they have a beer or two, they go pick their child up. Everybody goes home happy. Amazing. It's perfect great. day, right? Perfect right? day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So I was just thinking because we have, uh, I'm a small town person too, and I'm from Derry. So we have an Ionis in, uh, in Derry right now going mm -hmm. through. So when you guys are ready to expand, there's the next place that needs a brewery <laughs> is Derry PA. But another nice small town feel. Uh, like you could do the same thing. You have your pizza place, you, okay. have, you have that, you have rosemaries, but just throwing that out there. No, a, you can throw it out there with the PA brewing license. We're allowed to have two locations. Amazing. And uh, so we are thinking that after the holidays, when things calm down a little bit, that we very well might be on the hunt for location number two. The support continues like it has, which I, again, hope it will. Um, there's no reason we can't start to look. Perfect. So, yeah, we're going to be about wrapping it, uh, things up here. I want to thank you a lot for your time. Anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, you know, new beers that are going to be released soon or anything else you'd like to talk about? We are brewing new beers right now. They're actually fermenting right behind us. We have a Czech Pilsner that we brewed last weekend, and we started brewing our Christmas ale. That's going to be released for the holiday events uh, for the parade and for the holiday extravaganza, uh, Jolly Old Elf. Oh, so nice. that's coming, and uh, we are actively brewing some of the beers that were at that tasting. <laughs> so yeah, new brewer, uh, new beers are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully monthly. Perfect. I mean, the Christmas ale, that's great. There's not too many places even around here, I think, that have like the Christmas beer. So it's something I'm always looking for. So that's great. I'm going to have like a local option. It's good. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Good. Mad Elf is great, but I'd love to support local if I can for that. So holiday beer lovers, Illusion is going to be your stop. Well, yeah, I think that's about it for uh, this version of Inside the Brewery. Uh, to learn more about Illusion, do you want to talk about your hours, uh, where to find you on social media, all that fun stuff? Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, our website, www.illusionbrewing.com. Um, we are currently, we are open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that is something that we found with a lot of breweries is that they're only open a few days and we're open. We're not as busy on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but we are getting people coming in saying that they're very thankful mm -hmm. that we're open. Like it, it's, there's nothing, if everybody's closed on Monday, what do you do? Well, here we are, we're open. We're getting people in. We hope the word gets out further that we're open Monday night, Tuesday night, uh, open seven days a week right now. We're gonna try that out and see how it goes. Great, and uh, can you order food in? Do you have food here? We are expanding our food menu. We're working on that, and uh, but we let anybody, you can bring your own food in. Nice. We can order from the pizza shop. They've been delivering at night. They've been wonderful about that. Uh, you can order any food you'd want delivered here. Uh, we have to have food to, right. to serve with the COVID restrictions, but yeah, we've had people bring their leftovers. From home. They want to come down to Illusion for a beer. They know we have to have food. They've come in with their Tupperware containers, and they're like, is this okay? I'm, there's food on the table. There we go. There's food on the table. I can serve you a beer. We're set. And I just think that's so smart. I love the seven days a week. We, we hear a lot, you know, that a lot, too. It's like, well, what do I do on a Monday? Mm -hmm. It's like, here we go. Head on down to Vandergriff, like open seven days a week and check them out. Right. Oh, wonderful. Well, thanks again so much for your time today. Again, uh, Illusion Brewing Company right here in Vandergriff, PA, um, the newest uh, open spot on the Laurel Highlands Portor, one of 
uh, 40 spots that are now open and available for you to stop and earn great prizes as you support great local businesses, people that were home brewers and have realized their vision and their dream. Uh, to get started, make sure you go to lhportor.com. You can request a free passport. Uh, we send that to you right in the mail, or you can stop by a brewery, winery of your choosing in our area uh, and pick one up there. Just make sure you do a purchase, you get a sticker, you can redeem that all for prizes. So Robert, thanks again. I really Thank appreciate you. the time. Thank you for coming out. All right, we'll see you next time on Inside the Brewery.